All right, so in this particular video, we are going to be finding the solutions to a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. Um, first thing you need to write down in your journal is what actually the quadratic formula is. So I'm going to go right over here on my drawing board. I'm going to put x equals x equals x equals. There we go. <sighs> negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, I don't know why my board is going to be pausing and not pausing, but I will do my best to stay calm. So um, in a quadratic formula, it needs to be in standard form, which was ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So this is your quadratic formula, right? Uh, I, don't want, I don't want to circle on the rectangle. There we go. There's your quadratic formula right there. Okay. Now there's going to be a very important part of the formula, which is this part right here. So if you would highlight that baby and put a little arrow going right over here. Okay. Hey, that's your discriminant. Now the discriminant is a super duper important part of your quadratic formula all right the discriminant helps you figure out a couple of a uh, few scenarios so what scenarios does the discriminant help you find well i'm going to tell you right now first scenario if b squared minus 4 ac equals zero if this baby right here is equal to zero that means you have what's called one rational that's supposed to be rational and it's not backing up but that's okay i'm just gonna erase you look it doesn't back up that's okay one rational root okay now you're like what the heck is one rational root well i'll try to try to explain so let's go ahead and make a little x-axis and a little y-axis like that Okay, so if this guy right here is equal to the number known as zero, you got a parabola that literally comes down and just kisses the x-axis and comes back up, and you got one rational root either here, or you could have a negative opening, opening downward where the a value is less than zero, and then you got something that looks like that. All right, so if it equals zero, you got a scenario that looks like this. I'll add a couple of arrows just to make it look pretty. There we go. Now. Another scenario, if b squared minus 4ac is equal to any number known as a perfect square. You're like, what the heck is a perfect square? Like 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared, 16, 5 squared, 25. I think you get the gist, dot, dot, dot. It just goes on forever. If you get any number like this, then you don't have one rational root. You have, wait for it, wait for it. That's right, two rational roots. Ah, ah, ah. All right, so you have two rational roots if it's equal to a perfect square. Now, obviously, a perfect square, that means this number is going to be a positive number. So what would that look like? Well, you could have a couple of parabolas. All right, looks like this. All right, you got you could have a parabola that opens up like this, or a parabola that opens down like this. But these roots, these guys right there, right there, right there, and right there, they're all they're all going to be rational numbers. Okay, rational numbers like they can be put in the form of a ratio of two integers, like any like m over n. So you could have a two thirds. You could have four, which is four over one. Any number that's rational can be put into the form of a fraction okay if you don't know that then find another video dealing with rational numbers and that'll educate you All right number three now if b squared minus 4 ac is equal to any other positive number now how about this it's not it's not a perfect square that's probably easier yeah if it's equal to a number that's not a perfect square.
but it's still a positive number, obviously. It's still positive. It's just not a perfect square. So, for example, this is just an example like uh, 2 and a 3 and a 5 and a 7 and, oh, don't forget 6 because 6 is not a perfect square, sorry. 6, 7, 8, 9 is, 10 is not. So anything that's not a perfect square, like you can't find two perfect integers that multiply together to equal that number, all right, that kind of goes on. Then you also have something that looks like this, except these are no longer rational. They are what's known as two irrational roots. You have two irrational roots. All right, so these numbers that here are not going to be rational. They'll, they'll have some type of radical, like a radical 2 is an irrational root. All right, radical 3, radical 5, that type of stuff. All right, now number 4. If b squared, this is the last one, don't worry, the last one, minus 4ac is equal to a negative value, a negative number, you have what's called... Two imaginary roots. You're like, what the heck is an imaginary root? All right. So, for example, like, and toward that, it's like there's no real roots. Ready? I'm going to put a little star. No real solution. All right. Ain't going to work. So, let me go ahead and make a little graph where you have a parabola that has no solution. Okay. Like this. Oh, doesn't touch the x-axis. Ooh, how about this? No, doesn't touch it. Oh, close, but no, no cigar. All right, so anything like this, you're going to have two imaginary roots, no, no real solution. All right, so what would a negative number be like? For example, let's say b squared minus 4ac equal, let's say a negative 20. Well, if you look back over here, oh, where am I? Oh, it's slowly going. It's gets moving slow. This super new computer is working really slow. All right, here we go. All right, so if you had a negative inside of here, you can't take the square root of negative, so you have to know how to work with irrational. Hey, look at this. Look how slow it's going. You can fast forward if you want. Eventually, it'll get there. I don't know why it's going so slow. All right, here we go. So how would I simplify something that's, I don't know, like the square root of, negative 20. Now something we talked about yesterday is we talked about i, like what i is equal to. Now i is equal to the square root of negative 1. All right, here's a little shortcut, ready? i squared equals negative 1. All right, i to the power of 3 is equal to a negative i, and i to the power of 4 is equal to positive 1. That's just kind of a little shortcut to make sure you know, and then it keeps repeating over and over and over and over again. So for example, what if I broke this down into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 20? Well, negative 1 times 20 is negative 20. But wait, the square root of negative 1 is i. So now I just have to simplify the square root of 20. Well, is there a perfect square hidden inside there? Absolutely. A 4 times a 5, perfect square is 4. That's a 2 and a 2. If you want to simplify a radical, you're looking for groups of 2. So what comes out of this radical? What comes out? A 2. What's already there? An I. What's on the left on the inside? The square root of 5. So if you're wondering, what the heck did he do? The square root of negative 20 is 2i radical 5. Now, we're going to get into that later, but right now I just want to make sure you understood what an imaginary number is, all right? These are your imaginary number list, and it just keeps going on forever. So now we're going to solve this particular equation. If it'll let me slide over, it's nice and slow. There we go. All right, let's take a look at this guy. Now, if you're going to use the quadratic formula, step number one, you got to get it into this form right here. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero, just like that. So scan. Hmm, not everything equal to zero. It looks like I'm going to have to take away an 8X squared from this side and take away an 8X squared from this side. So what do I got? Looks like I have a 6, all right? 2 minus 8 is negative 6x squared. And then it looks like I have a minus 3x equals 0. Now, I want you guys to notice something. Do you see how all these numbers are divisible by 3? 
Well, if you wanted to, just to make your life a little bit simpler, you could, if you want it. If you recognize that, you could literally divide everything by a 3, and you would get 2 minus 2x squared minus x equals 0. Now, this is still not in the right order. we got to put things in the right order. So all the x squareds have to go up front. So let's put the x squareds up front, everybody. There we go. Got negative 2x squared. Let's put the x's in the middle. Negative x plus a positive 2 equals a zero. So let's identify our a, our b, and our c value. What is our a value right up here? a value is oh, negative two. What's our b value? Negative one. What's our c value? Two. So remember, first step, what we need to do is we need to find the value of the discriminant. I don't know why every single time I do this it goes really slow. There we go. Let's find the value of the discriminant, which is b squared minus four a c so open parentheses what's our b negative one okay minus four times my a value times my c value now what is my a value a value is negative two so negative two and my c value is two so when i multiply this out you can use a calculator i'm just going to multiply it out negative one times negative one is one negative times negative is a positive four times two is eight times two is 16 so it's plus 16. so it looks like my discriminant is the number 17. okay so this is the value of my discriminant now what does that help me with that helps me with the nature of my roots now that is not a perfect square so i have two irrational roots and you can clearly see that that baby right there is my discriminant so if i plug everything in and the quadratic formula which is once again negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a if i plug it in a negative times a negative is a positive so i got one plus or minus the square root of 17 all over two times a two times negative two is negative four boom i got my answer and those are my roots. Now, how would I separate that into two roots? If you're wondering, like, how would I separate this guy into a solution? So one of my solutions, okay, would be negative 1 over 4, okay, minus radical 17 over 4. That's one of That's a smaller one. So it's... Um, I put the negative, so it's the negative. And the other one is negative 1 over 4 plus radical 17 over 4. And those would be my solutions as an exact solution. But you don't have to do this in the Khan Academy. You just have to find basically find the one that has the right discriminant, and you're good. Okay. Let's do one more. All right. So here we have, I'll go a little bit faster on this one, okay? We've got negative, uh, we have negative 7x squared plus 7x plus 1 equals negative 8. Now, here we go. Let's, let's see if the board starts right. Oh, there we go. Let's see if the board starts right. Negative. Oh, come on. Come on now. Let's see if the board will write. It's communicating. I better pause it real quick. All right. Let's see if this thing will work now. If I just do something where... All right. There we go. Negative 7x squared plus 7x plus 1 equals negative 8. looks like I got like hit, I got a hidden arrow just to get it to write. Kind of weird. All right. So we got to get it into, once again, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. That's the form that we have to get it in. And it's not in that form. What I'm going to have to do is there's my equal sign. I'm going to have to add an 8 to this side and add an 8 to this side. So Let's get it equal to zero. So now we've got negative 7x squared plus 7x plus 9 equals zero. So let's identify, ready, the a value, the b value, and the c value. So our a value is negative 7, our b value is 7, and our c value is 9. Next thing we do is we find the, the value of the discriminant. So it's b squared minus 4ac. So here we go. My b value is 7, so put 7 squared minus 4 times my a value, which is negative 7, times my c value, which is 9. There we go. So we get a total of 49, and negative times negative is a positive. I'm going to pause real quick. So here we go. We're just going to go over here. 
going to type in 4 times 7 times 9. Oh, not a 6. Let's go back there. No, there we go. All right, press Enter. We get 252. So we're going to add 252 to that, baby. All right, 252. And then just go over here, and we're going to do 49. Add 49 to it. What do we get? 301. Woohoo! All right, now 301. I oh, guess it looks like I can't do back. Oh, well. I'll just erase. 301 is the value of my discriminant. Well, you can clearly see that there's the discriminant 301. That's going to be my answer. Um, but if you wanted to, you could just look up right here. And you can clearly see that it, this is your, right here, there's your negative B. See, negative 7. There's your negative B plus or minus the square root of your discriminant, B squared minus 4AC all over 2 times your a value, because 2 times negative 7 is negative 14, and that's what you'll end up getting. But the shortcut for this guy is just, hey, find the value of your discriminant, all right? Now, we're going to get one where we might have to simplify, so go, we'll, hopefully the next one we'll be able to simplify the radical, all right? There we go. All right, let's see if we need to simplify this radical real quick. Ready? All right, let's try the strategy. I'm going to hit right arrow. See, by doing that, that allows me to write. It does. I like it. Okay, so I found a shortcut to making sure the board writes. Just put the right arrow. So we have 3x equals 9x squared minus 10. we got to get everything equal to 0, which means i got to take away 3x from this side. got to take away 3x from this side. So we have 0 equals 9x squared minus 3x minus 10. Notice, I move that guy up front and move him in the back because we have to get it into standard form. So it's the same process, okay? Numbers change, process stays the same. So A equals 9, B equals negative 3, C equals negative 10, just like that. So we have A, B, and C. So once again, we're going to find our discriminant, which is B squared minus 4AC. Now our, here we go, negative 3 squared minus 4 times my A value, which is 9, times my C value, which is negative 10. All right, so we get 9 plus a total of, let's see here, we got 36, 360. So I guess 369, let's check, let me make sure I did that right. Um, we got in parentheses negative 3 squared minus 4 times my A value, which is 9, times my C value, which is negative 10. There we go. Yeah, 369. Now, 3 can go into this, okay, because all these add up to a multiple of 3. So 3 goes, if you're wondering, like, how would you figure out your factors, you get y equals do 369 divided by x and hit the table button, and you can find a list of factors. So check this out. Look, look, right here. Let's scroll down. Look. It's a 9 and a 41. That's a good That's a good set. You can do 3 and 123, but 9 and 41 is right there. So here's the value of your discriminant. So here we go. We're going to do use the quadratic formula one more time. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now we found the value of our discriminant. It's right there, 369. So here we go. Negative b makes that a positive 3, because that says negative b, so a negative times a negative is a positive, plus or minus the square root of 369 all over 2 times my a value. What's 2 times 9? 2 times 9 is 18. All right, so we're now the last thing we got to do is finally we get one where we got to simplify the radical. Yay! Now we found the factors of it. The factors are 9 and 41. How do we do that? We go to the calculator, we hit y equals, we type in the number divided by x, and when you hit your table button, boom, you can clearly see two factors, 9 and 41. Now, why did I choose a 9? Because it's a perfect square, and it breaks down to a 3 and a 3. So this actually simplifies to 3 radical 41. Now, check this out. If I, in my calculator, do, 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 hold on. if I hit the square root of 369 and press enter i get this ridiculous decimal but check this out if i hit 3 radical 41 it's the same number so see these this is the simplified version of this guy so we want to get good at learning how to do what ready 
simplify radicals. Man, if we could simplify radicals, our world would be a heck of a lot more peaceful. All right, but I'm bunch. Now, check this out. So we're going to put 3 plus or minus 3 radical 41 all over 18. All right, so this is an answer. This is true. However, we once again, we got we to gotta reduce our fraction. What fraction? Because 3s go into what? 18, a total of 6 times. So here's your final answer and i'm going to stop this particular um video F not final answers final answer there we go is one plus or minus the square root of 41 all over six and i'm done right there that's what i'm looking for can i find it can i find it? oh i see it now just see, see how they have a negative that's okay because a negative divided by a negative still cancels to a positive so answer choice d is totally and absolutely and undoubtedly correct the mundo. There we go. All right. Now, the next thing is going to be a heck of a lot easier. It's called the number of solutions to of a quadratic equation. Just remember, if it touches once, right here, it touches once, that means your determinant is zero. That means b squared minus 4ac equals a zero. So I'm going to do a quick little review. If it touches once, right, let's see if that works. There we go. If it touches right there, I guess it's not let me draw on it. I don't know why it's not let me draw on it, but it won't. But that's when your dis discriminant is zero. All right? I can draw. Where, where can I draw? I can draw there, but I can't draw here. Interesting. Well, that just stinks. Okay, so that's when your answer is when b squared. Oh, looks like I got to pause the video. All right, I don't know why this thing doesn't draw and when it doesn't, or why, why it erases and doesn't erase. Okay, Let's see what works out. If b squared, 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 not working. All right. Well, I'm just going to forget that. It's just, whoa, there we go. If it equals zero, that means you got one solution. So your discriminant is zero. Hit check. All right. Oh, look at that. It looks like I finished that one. All right, hold on. Close that out. Let's go to number solutions. All right, I'm just using my regular mouse because my board. All right, what is the value of the discriminant and how many distinct real zeros? So this is the one where you actually have to find the value of the discriminant. Now, it's not hard. Let's see if it'll write. Come on, board. B squared minus 4AC equals what? That's what we got to figure out. So right here, what's my A value? My A value is 3. My B value is 24. That's supposed to be a 24. Wow. And my C value is 48. Okay, so we're going to do B squared, which is 24 squared minus 4 times my A value, which is 3 times my C value, which is 48. Okay, now when you do all of this, it's going to end up equaling a 0, but I'm going to go ahead and type it in. All right. So we got parentheses 24 squared minus 4 times 3 times, oops, see how it's equal to 0? When it equals 0, that means you have literally one distinct real 0 because your discriminant is a big old fat 0, all right? So if you're wondering where the heck I'm getting this, if we go back to our, let's see here, where's our pages? If I go back a few pages here, hold on one second. All this right here. Come on, hand work. All right. If I move that, move over real quick. All right. This is where we talked about Wow. Oh. Maybe I didn't talk about it. Oh. All right, we'll just go ahead and type it in here. What's the value of the discriminant? It was zero. What's the how many distinct real zeros? We got one solution. 
All right, you can clearly see that this does not touch the x-axis. If it does not touch the x-axis, that means the discriminant has to be negative. All right, so I'm going to say negative. What's the value of the discriminant? It looks like we actually got to find the value of the discriminant. So here we go. Let's see if my board writes. Let's see if it works here. All right, so we've got, once again, it doesn't write. It writes when it wants to. Sounds like a teenager. It doesn't work when it wants to. All right, here we go. Come on. Negative 7 x squared plus 8 x plus 2. This is our a value. This is our b value. This is our c value. So we're going to do b squared minus 4 times my a value times my c value. Just remember, it's b squared minus 4ac. Know it, live it, love it. There we go. 64 plus. 4 times 7, which is 20, uh, negative times negative is a positive, so that's why I got 28 times 2, which is 56. So we add these babies together, and it looks like we got um, ourselves 120, all right? So yeah, 120. Now what does that mean if we get 120? That is not a perfect square, but that is the value of our discriminant. Okay, so how many x-intercepts do I have? A total of two because it's a positive number. If this is positive, you're going to have two distinct real zeros. It just happens to be two irrational roots. All right, so right now, what are you going to type in for the value of the discriminant? Hold on. Let's hit refresh. And pause the video. All right, so here we go. Value of the discriminant. This one was zero. The nature of the roots, it means it's got one. I don't know why it made us redo this. All right, uh, this one right here, it had, it was, it's going to be a negative discriminant because it has no zero. So it's going to, the discriminant is going to be negative. I don't know why it's making us redo it. All right, our discriminant on this one was 120, which means it's going to have a total of two x intercepts because that's a positive number. Anytime it's positive, you're going to have two. All right, and last but not least, if this has two zeros, yeah, it has two zeros, that means the discriminant is totally positive, and that's how easy this is. All right, so hope that was helpful. This video was very frustrating because my board was working sometimes and not the other, but I hope you guys have a non-frustrating day.